One of the things we do here at Lawrence Livermore with our high performance computing capabilities is tackle really complex problems with tons of contributing variables. Like when you have a lot of things that are all influencing each other and changing all the time, you're going to need a really powerful computational tool to end up with an accurate picture of the potential outcome. LNL researchers recently added a variable to one of the biggest problems we look at today that drastically changes our whole picture of what our world might look like in the future. And that variable is clouds. Let's back up a little bit and start with some basics. The most common cloud on our planet is a stratocumulus cloud. More of the Earth is covered in this kind of cloud than in any other kind of cloud. There are lots of different kinds of stratocumulus clouds, and they usually indicate a change in weather is on the way, even if they themselves are probably not going to rain on you. But they have another important job, too. Clouds act kind of like sunscreen for the Earth. They reflect sunlight away from us down here on Earth and back into space, and keep the Earth much cooler than it would otherwise be. And this new research suggests that as our planet warms, there will be less clouds. But wait, how? I mean, surely as the Earth warms, there would be more evaporation and therefore more clouds? It's actually a little more complicated than that, because clouds are pretty finicky. While they may look like cotton fluff, they're basically accumulations of liquid droplets and ice crystals that are actually really dependent on highly specific conditions to form properly. They need specific layers of air at different humidities and temperatures, both above and below them, in order to clump up in this specific way that actually forms a cloud. And with any disturbances to those conditions, poof, clouds dissipate. They can't hold their form anymore. They're gone. Fun cloud fact here, a scientist who studies clouds is called a nephologist. Not a nephrologist, that's to do with your kidneys, and no, not a nephologist, like here at the National Ignition Facility, a nephologist. So, what's the larger impact beyond having to wear our sunglasses more often? Well, it may be pretty serious. I mean, clouds really help keep our world cool, shielded from the hot, hot, hot rays of the sun, and without them, we may see much more drastic warming of the Earth than we previously predicted. Some models actually project an additional 8 degrees Celsius of warming after including breakup of stratocumulus clouds in their computational models. And that's on top of the already predicted rise in temperatures that global scientific consensus predicts will accompany climate change. There are several pretty remarkable things about this work. One is our improved understanding of this previously unexplored role of cloud dynamics in the wider trend of global climate change. I mean, exploring these extremely complicated impacts of cloud physics, from the level of the ice particles themselves to the level of the cloud as a whole, is already super exciting. But then, including that detail in these wider models of what may happen to the world as our climate changes? I mean, imagine how many moving parts that is all interacting with one another and changing each other as they change. That is some incredible computation. And while these models are getting more detailed and scientists hope more accurate, they also want us all to know that these models are still a work in progress. We're uncovering new details all the time, and as we add more complexity to our models, we have to make sure that's not throwing any of our other computations off. And only by putting even more time, effort, and data into these models will we be able to know if what they're telling us is really true to life. But they're a really good place to start for understanding how our world is changing and how we can prepare for it. If you want even more detail on this topic, then check out the links I've left in the description down below. And if you have any more questions about this news or our climate models in general, then leave them for us down in the comments below or on our social media pages. We are at Livermore Lab on all of our platforms. Check out another episode of Inside the Lab by going to the full playlist on our YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.